2 wide banana on 101. Ready? You ready? Ready. There That's we ready. go. All right. All right. Spider 2 wide banana. Uh, I, I just came up with that one right off rip, Sammy, because uh, John Gruden, that was his favorite play. And John Gruden's been working with the Saints. So John Gruden's kind of back, his favorite play. So I'm expecting Spider 2 wide banana. I'm George Carmona, by the way. Yeah, the, the quarterback of this. So I would, uh, I would hope that John Gruden finds his way over to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers pretty soon because they're looking really rough. My name's Sammy Liotti, by the way. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You're you're a stud. You're a stud, dude. That's why I picked you up uh, to run Spider Two Wide Banana because you knew it, and we're gonna run it. We're gonna score lots of touchdowns. I'm ready to rock. Let's rock. All right, Sammy. Let's cut the shit though. Real talk. I never in my wildest dreams imagined you being on a reality TV show ever. But it makes perfect sense because every time I saw you in high school, you were very animated. I think you and my brother, uh, you know, combined made Las Vegas High School, the high school you went to, just a dope overall experience, even for me as a teacher. So when you had the opportunity to become a reality TV show star, and I saw you, I was so proud. And I just wanted to say thank you for pushing yourself at such a young age to go do that, because that's stressful as shit. Um, you didn't just go on a reality TV show. You also were the youngest ever to appear on this reality TV show, and we are talking about Survivor. So explain to me how all this came about. <clears throat> Man, that's a crazy... like. You just said uh, we made it. I just wanted to comment on we did make Vegas an experience, bro. Like we had kids waking up like ready to go to school that was never going to school before. Like because the lunch table was popping, like the the weight room was popping. We was having fun out there. And honestly, I would have never expected that that was going to be my path. The way it really stemmed was after high school, I hit that little wall that everybody else hits to where like you you have to figure out like, what am I going to do, bro? Like what's what's life going to be like for me now? Like what's going to happen? And for whatever odd reason, I picked the path of working for a funeral home being a pet cremator. So I started doing that literally like a week after we graduated. We went to California wow. for we a went vacation, straight into it. went straight into it. And I was doing that. And, uh, you know, for some reason, being a pet cremator is not all that fun. I don't know what that reason is. Maybe it's the fact that you're throwing, like, puppies and bulls and lizards in a fire one by one. But I was not having a fun time. And I remember I didn't know what I had to do, bro, because I was like, it was like every day of high school was so much fun, bro. Like, I was waking up, like, going yeah. to practice, like, the man on the camp, like, you know, all that good stuff. But it, And then I was all of a sudden just so bored and working. And I would come home and complain and to my mom, to my brother about like, bro, like why work, work, work. And they were all like, my brother at this point had been working for like a year straight. And everybody would just always tell me the same thing, bro. It was like, welcome to real life. Welcome to real life. And I would be like, bro, this cannot be what real life is like. This cannot be. So I remember the exact day that I decided this is what I got to do, man. Like I got to, I got to, I got to go on this show is I was driving, I was doing my drive, and it, w it was not far from where we're at right now, actually. It was over on uh, VECC on uh, Tropicana, off Tropicana. Okay. And I went in there at 5 in the morning, literally brink of dawn, and the TV was on, and it was a Netflix, it was Survivor was on the TV. And I look at the Survivor, I was like, damn, bro, like, that's really cool. Like, I remember that show, dude, like, I remember I watched that show during COVID. I remember I watched the show all through COVID. So I walked out to the truck right as soon as that, like I skipped, I was supposed to go grab the dogs and put them in the back of the car. I skipped that part. I went right back to the truck. I look up on my phone, Survivor, the new Survivor cast is about to come out. And it's a dude from Vegas. It's a 42 year old dude from Vegas. Mm. And I sat with my hands on my face like, bro, I just missed out on this. Like this dude from Vegas took my spot. Like they're not gonna pick nobody from Vegas again. So all of a sudden, dude, I went home, started crying to my mom again. And she said, shut up. Like, like Sammy just, she didn't tell me shut up. She said, Sammy, just make a video. Man. Maybe. Maybe she said shut up. She, she did. I just, I knew I she would know. listen to this. So I don't want her to hear that. But she, <laughs> <laughs> she just, she said, shut up. She's like, Sammy, just make a video. Just make a video. And nobody was home. And I was not, I was, 
I was like embarrassed to like be like that's doing all that. That's the worst time to make a video. Like uh, being forced to make a video, it's never a fun time. No, dude, dude, and and and, and I was like, like. My brother wasn't home. My sister wasn't home. She was about to get home in 20 minutes. So I was like, all right, you're going to hurry up. I put the phone up. I just started talking. Like, I just like started being me and uh, kind of everything just kind of went from there. Like the the next day, the next day I got contacted and we just went from there, man. And, and so where do you send this video to? As you Is send this video to uh, the, the website, like yeah, cbssurvivorcasting.com. Okay. And um, I, I, I had actually forgot that I made the video. And I felt so bad, bro, because, like, I got out, like, even being out there and I met people that have been applying for, like, 20 years. Yeah, like, no, it sounds like <laughs> like this was ex I waited, entirely I waited too 12 easy hours, for you. bro. <laughs> like, <laughs> I waited 12 hours. Some people waited 20 years and, like. That's crazy. <laughs> hey, but, no, that's that's the way it rolls. And I think it's because you do have, like I went back to, electric high school personality. That's how I knew you. It makes sense. You want young, energetic people that aren't afraid to, you know, shoot the shit and talk and survive. And yeah. I think, I, I don't know, do you still have that video? I, I have the beginning of the video. Should I show the beginning? Uh, here, I well, send it to me after. I'll put it in. Yeah, right I have the here. beginning. But I have yes. the very beginning of it. I don't have the whole thing, but um, like... You, it's funny because you said it makes sense. To me, it doesn't make any sense. Like really? to this day, it still doesn't make any sense. Like, it, I, I feel so lucky to have gotten to do that and like to have represented it. And like, I'm proud of like who I am and everything. But like, I think I'm the example that people should look to and be like, bro, you could do it too. Because like, I'm just a regular dude, and I say like in between, and I say bro in between. That's everything I say. I don't have any articulate words that I use. There's nothing. Like there's like maybe there's a couple special things about me. I think I got nice quads and I think I got good hair, <laughs> but there's not like a ton of things that are like completely truly special about me. I think it's just simply the fact that I wanted to do something and I did it. And so yeah. I think that's like a lot of people should be just trying to do things like that, whether it's like a silly TV show or whatever. But it was a crazy experience. So leading up to it, and and you knew you were gonna be on the show. How hard did you turn it up in the weight room? I always figured like if I knew I was gonna be on the like I'd be coming in looking six packed up already or like what, what was your mindset well you would think that right you would think that that's like the best idea you know get a little six pack and get a little two maybe pack not a six chest. but just like fit you know what i mean because you want to come it's in a tough little fat. Though. you want to come in a little fat exactly that's that's just, the biggest problem like okay. i was looking at everything like okay what do i do then because like i i don't want to i don't want to like be malnourished like i don't want to that is true i, I don't want to be out there like looking good but like did feeling you knew bad. it was going to be a shorter season I did. Yeah, okay. I knew it was gonna be shorter. Um, I knew, but I knew we weren't gonna eat also. And so that was like before they could eat like rice and beans, which like it doesn't make it any that much better, but it makes it a little bit better. Like yeah. when you're not eating anything, that's I mean, come on. It sucks. So, so leading up to it, I would I would work out on a two day fast. Like I saw I go to a two day fast and then I go work out. And bro, I remember being like, I remember doing it the first time and like being like, all right, bro, I'm not gonna do this. Like I'm just not gonna do this. <laughs> Like I'm, I'm simply just not gonna do this because it was so hard to like, even consider. Cause I, I'm, I don't like working out unless I'm working towards something. So working yeah. out after high school, I didn't do it. I didn't do it for months after high school. So then all of a sudden, I had this opportunity, and I looked down on my freaking belly, bro, and I was like, thick. What do I do? Like, look at what, the position I've been in, bro. I remember going to bench. I got under 185, like just to warm up or whatever. Uh oh. And bro, veins was popping on my forehead after two reps. Yeah, and I remember I, you were I, pumping it. It was at, it, it at was short. Time. It was short dudes next to me that was like, poof, 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 or like two forty five, and I couldn't believe it. I simply just couldn't damn. believe it. So, so were you mentally psyching yourself out? Like, damn, there's no way I can. Every I can single come day, bro. Every single day leading up to it, and I feel like a lot of people could say it's like, cause be like, I knew, I knew I had it, I knew I had it. No, bro. Every day leading up to it, it was always like, cause, cause. And, and it never stopped. It never stopped until I got out there because every day before I found out I was going to go on the show was, oh, my gosh, like, am I going to make it on the show? Like, am I going to make it on the show? Am I going to make it on the show? I, I should have said this when I was in my interviews. I didn't do that. I should have done that. I should have said that. But then and then after I made it on, then it was like, bro, I made it on the show. Oh, shoot, bro. Like, so, OK, but I could be the first one off and then it would be a waste of my time of going on the show. And then I'm like, yep. maybe, I'll, maybe I'll like really. uh Maybe I'll like get hurt out there. Like maybe people will not like me when I'm at like all this stuff, bro. That just like was piling on top of me because that's and I I couldn't stop it. It doesn't not it did not matter like how much 
the work I knew I was putting in or how confident I yeah. felt or how excited I was. It didn't matter. Like, yeah. And, and I mean, you're still so young because before that you, you had to find out you're going to be on the show at what age? 18. I was, yeah, I was 17 and a half or 17 and three quarters because I right, know you're right. I was 18. I was 17 and a half when I decided I wanted to do it. And I was 18 when I actually applied. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, when I applied, I was actually, I graduated four months earlier. Like I had graduated from high school four months before that. Yeah. It's like, I do think I'm a little more mature than most people. Yeah, no, 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 but, Sammy. I mean, you were you were killing puppies yeah. and, and cats. I think that matures somebody really quick. Like, I mean, I, I've never done that. Well, here, like, man. so I think you might be more mature than me. I, 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 I do. I years do, on. You. I had to clarify this on the show too. I do. I'm not killing them. No, no, no. no I'm no. simply, proper, I'm simply properly giving them an arrest to the end of their life. Yes. Like you know, like just laying them no, in the furnace on the concrete slab. That's hey, all I'm doing. Hey, I'm on your side, Sammy. I know. All right. I know it's got to be done. Yeah, I know. It's dirty jobs. Mike Rowe is afraid to go and do that shit. Yeah. Right? And I'm sure Discovery has said a couple times, hey, Pre let's do this. Let's do it. And Mike Rowe's like, it's a line I won't cross. It's a good thing, man. Like, I, like it, I'm at the end of the day, man, like, I, I just I just knew I, going into it, I just knew I was going to be the youngest one. And I even remember, I mean, I remember the day we left. I remember the day I left to go out to Fiji. I was, I had just got my teeth whitened, right? Oh, and as, I was really because it was, it was a must. Do. It was a yes. must. Like, that's the last thing you do. I had to get my teeth whitened. I was wondering, but after after you go, yeah. you're going to Fiji, teeth whitened, and and I was I had I had just finished working at Walmart. My homie Tyrone at Walmart, he was a dope dude. Like he he found my paychecks for me. He found all the stuff that I had lost before, and so because I was living in Utah and I had come back to fly out of Vegas, and so I was I called my mom. I was like, I'm about to go. You know, I'm about to go to. Popeyes real quick. I'm gonna get Tyrone just some food just because he helped me out. And my mom was like, "No, you gotta go. Like your flights at this time, you gotta go." And then I start going back and forth with my mom, arguing with my mom. And then she's like, "I hung up. I hung up." I was like, "No, nah, I'm not doing this. I hung up. Call me back." Oh my gosh, bro. I hung. I answered. I'm like, "What's up?" She's like, "Don't you ever hang up on me. You like you think is this how you really want to leave? Like you you don't hang up on me right now." And I was like, "Bro, like." And I remember she she was right by the way too. She, I mean, my mom's always right. Cause I almost missed that flight, but we got back in the car and I remember just, she was driving me to the airport and I was just like, bro, nobody else just got in an argument with their mom before they left for the show. <laughs> nobody else. I'm the only one that probably just got in a argument with their mom right before this. And I was just, that psyched me out even more. Cause I was like, bro, I'm so freaking young doing, I'm going into this. Like, yeah, what is like, what's, there's gotta be a disadvantage for me. But like I said, she was right. Cause I literally walk in the airport and they were boarding my flight. So that would have sucked. But yeah. Yeah. Wow. So that now they, are, I would imagine, have alternates just like at the ready. Like if somebody like backs out, did. Yeah. So there are alternate people that will be like that are like locked and loaded. But um, I think for the most part, you don't have to worry about people backing out or like. I mean, it's and, an if, and you know, if, and if I was, and if I was like to miss a flight or something, like. I'm sure that I would have, I mean, <laughs> I I, my mom would have drove my butt down there, bro. Like I would, I, there was no missing that for me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, for the most part, when I, you know, the, the cast is kind of the way that they want it. Mm -hmm. Um, and the alternates are there ready to, ready to rock and roll just in case somebody gets, you know, in this case, like maybe COVID or maybe somebody, uh, starts having anxiety yeah. when you get all the way out there. It's just things like that. So Let's just go over and hit some of the highlights. You came in what place again? I got seventh. I got seventh place, which it's funny because like if you told me before, if you told me before the show, like, hey Sammy, like you're gonna go out there, you're gonna do this, you're gonna do this, you're gonna get seventh. I would have been like, okay, like I'll take it, bro. Because yeah. I was freaking out about yeah, I was yeah. freaking out about getting in last. But dude, I mean, coming back, it was it was tough because like seventh was it's like that. It's right in between. You're not final five, which is like the finale. Mm -hmm. You're not final six, which is further than seven. You're not final three, which is the furthest that you can get in the game. And like it was all these little things that I was just kind of like upset about because I felt like I was so close. Yeah. But it was like so far away. Like it was it was right there, but it wasn't. So I have to remember how many competitions did you win? Uh, so you don't have to remember very much because I didn't actually win any. I, I, I didn't win any individual immunity, which was such a freaking. Fuck. That was another thing, dude, was 
it's funny how all this stuff that that didn't matter to me out there, I came back. Not that it didn't matter to me. Like I was trying in those challenges. Oh, bro. of course. I dude. was freaking. I was. But going I understand hard. what you're saying. Like there's there's participating in a challenge and like competing, and you competed in every single one. Yeah, bro. I you mean, know? and it's like it's like I can't. On I, I come back and I have this bucket list that I'm looking at, and I'm looking like, all right, yeah, I did that. Like made it past, made it to the merge. Well, individual. I didn't win individual immunity. Oh, I didn't find an idol. Oh my gosh, like. And and I was looking at this stuff and I was like, bro, what did I do out there? And like I started psyching myself out again. And I was like, bro, what did I do no. out there? Like, what happened? But then when the show, I was pleased with everything bro, when the show came out. Okay, because I understand the way they have to cut these things. All right, if we were to do a minute by minute breakdown of TV time on Survivor, I think you dominated the season and it always had me worried because whenever i see somebody in survivor and they're getting a little extra tv time i'm like oh their ass is getting fucking cut so yeah <laughs> you know what i mean but you were constantly producing great sound bites so i mean as a personality i think you succeeded it was and, fun man yes. i was i was grateful i was grateful to be surrounded by so many the, 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 i could do this all corny stuff all day i'm not gonna do that i'm just gonna say this bro i'm gonna say this i'm gonna say i was out there with a lot of good people but damn, bro, like a million dollars, dude. That's a lot of money, bro. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of money. And I came back. I literally remember, bro, I came back in my checking account because I had, I had all my subscriptions that were still pumping out. And I look at my Wells Fargo and I just stared at it for a second, just like, <sighs> because it was $1,843.19 in it. And I remember coming back being so freaking annoyed that there wasn't gonna be a million dollars in there in a few months, bro. And and I I, I would and I, it was hard though because I couldn't complain to everybody about it. I couldn't complain because I was truly grateful for a short amount of time. And then when I started watching the show again, I was like, damn, okay, I wish I did that. I wish I did that. I wish I did that. And but I didn't. But my philosophy was, I, some people came home and told their people how they did and stuff. I didn't want to do that. Yeah, I definitely didn't want to do that because. It was cool enough coming back and like seeing how many people had found out or watched the promo that I was on. Yep. I felt like a little king for a second because it was just really cool. Rightfully like, so. Just like, you know, like Vegas, like it's kind of like it's a big, small community. Yes. And especially the East Side community. Yes. And so that was super dope. Like everybody that that was hitting me up over time. And it was it was it was it was super cool when I got back because we the, the trailer had come out while we were already gone. Yeah. So we I literally landed at the airport, saw the trailer. All my texts started flowing in, so that was fun. Dude, well, you um, you definitely have set yourself up now, I think, and I don't know if they've reached out to you again, but CBS likes to now put people on possibly Amazing Race, Big Brother. If you were to have your pick of the litter here on which show you would want to be on next, what would it be? Survivor's king, man. Survivor okay. is king. Okay. Survivor's king to, to all, like... Uh, I, I I think a lot of people will go on these shows with uh, the hope or the, you know, like they want to become a reality star or like this. And that's not me. I don't want to do that. I love Survivor. I love the show Survivor. I love the philosophy of it. Like I love like the true the like the fact that you're out there on an island. I've always liked the island a little bit. You know, I like a little dirt in curls. my I like a little dirt on my britches. You know. Yeah. Oh, so all right, mate. I, I like I like going out there and like meeting the, the. I think Survivor brings the best out in people. Mm -hmm. Not the Big Brother, Amazing Race, or whatever it doesn't. It's just I, I'm just I'm not. I, I feel I as it. if the show that show gave me everything I needed, and I don't know that another show could do that. So yeah, yeah, I 100 percent where you get where you're coming from. Even like a show like The Challenge. Like, I don't, I don't think, listen, man, I'm going to go on record and I'll just blow whatever chance, whatever. I don't like the challenge. I think the challenge is like, I think it's, I think it's a little silly. I think it, I, I, it, it looks hardcore. I'm not saying it's not, I'm not saying it's easy by any means. I'm just saying, I'm not saying, I'm not saying that I would be the best at it. I'm simply just saying everything seems a little more manufactured, like. This elimination today, I need to go. I, we need to put her in elimination. We're on Survivor, bro. Like you're balling, you're crying. Like yeah, it's just the, it's two it different flows, things, man. It, and it flows a lot fast. Yeah, I, I get where you're coming from, and I, I appreciate you answering it like that because shit, like that in my eyes. Whenever I see people hop from CBS show to CBS show, I'm like, God, that is. It's a little. It, it's dope, but I feel like you're also there's there's only so many people that have that opportunity, and you repeating. 
is taking away somebody else's chance. That's a really good way to look at it because a lot of people also complain about Survivor casting so many new seasons, like with new players, because people want a returning season because it's been so long since they've done one. Mm -hmm. But I feel that same way in a sense to where it's like, I know how grateful I was for that. And, you know, obviously, hopefully they could do a returning season again soon so I could see some of the cool people that I've gotten to meet through this, maybe go out there and play again. But, like, I, I also think that there, that's something that, that should be noted is that there's a lot of people that were just like me that maybe were able to watch me and now are getting up and yeah. deciding to apply. Or somebody that's like you or somebody that's like our mothers or our grandmas that are like, hey, Definitely. man, like let's do this. And those are people that deserve to get that chance too. So that's a really I, good yes, thing, George. Of I mean, course. Of consider course. a guy right here. Yeah, I mean, really consider. Hey, consider me. I've never been on a fucking TV. Junior, you want to be considered? I mean, and Nick wants to be considered back there. We got multiple people in here that we got want that just ready to, to rock. be considered. I think Junior wouldn't last very long, but. Oh, no. That would be like, let's get this fucking gargantuan <laughs> out of here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Nick, you are a resident Survivor fan. Do you have any questions right now? And if not, I know I put you on the spot. You can ask one later. I, I am actually curious. Um, is is Jeff Probst nice in person? Dude, listen, Jeff Probst is le like legitimately one of the most genuine people I've ever met, which was, it wasn't surprising to me, but I think it'd be surprising to a lot of people because he is a showrunner of a big scale reality television show and like has no obligation to be that way. There's no cameras that are rolling. Like he could be a, he could be like, oh, like. Guys, Where's, like, stand right there. Give me a coffee and a water. Listen, now. like, like I, and somebody told me this is a rule or something, but I don't really, like, I don't, I don't know if it's a rule or not, but, like, he's so involved with everything, like, telling, making sure you understand what you're supposed to do when you do challenges and, like, when you, and, like, just in between when cameras aren't rolling, you could just, like, go back and forth with them. Like, I remember, I remember he had said something one time where it was, like, um, this is just a highlight moment of me being out there. I was just, I thought it was cool, man. Like, he was just, he was uh, talking about, the ratings came back. Like, guess what the number one show on CBS was for the spring? Because we were out there in, like, in the spring or whatever. And I was like, Love Island. And he just thought it was so funny. And when I when he started laughing, I was like, I just, you know how, like, you made somebody laugh and you just kind of smile and chuckle and you just yeah. look at them like. You're like, I nailed that. Yeah. That's a good I just, one. I just, I just sniped that, bro. Like, <laughs> that was, so that was cool. He's, he's a super genuine dude, though. Like, cares a lot about the show, cares a lot about the players. And um, he got some nice calves, too. He got some really nice defined dude, calves. Yeah. He got some veins in them calves, dude. I would imagine, and I, I, this this is another Jeff Probst question, is his skin as leathery as I would imagine? That's, I mean, a lot of seasons out there in Fiji, the hot, you know. The guy takes good care of his skin, man. Good, I mean, he's, he, good skin he's, care? He's not out of the sun when he doesn't have to be. Got you. And he makes sure that... I don't know. I don't know what the secret serum is, man. I didn't ask about that. I didn't. Did ask you ever see him serum. putting on sunblock? Like, I, didn't, I didn't see that. He's, no. He's, he he moves in silence. He moves in silence, mm -hmm. and that's another thing about the crew. I want to say they are so respectful of all that stuff. They're not going. They're not going like, the, you know, they'll drink water because we could drink water. There we have access to water too. But yeah. even that, they're they're very careful about. It. They don't like sit and eat granola bars in front of you. They don't sit and like. Um, you know, put on bug spray in front of you and all this stuff. They don't. They don't. Gotcha. They, they don't do all that, man. Like they're out there with you. They're doing it with you. Like they're mm. playing Survivor too. They're out in the trenches. Um. So this this could be a clip just solely for the Survivor cameramen out there. Out of all the the cameramen, were were there ones that you were like, I think you'd win Survivor cameraman. We did. We do. We literally talked about. We sat. <laughs> we sat for. It was when we did the split vote. We we did a split vote and we went to the uh, Vesey Beach. We went to a different beach. And we were sitting there for like literally an hour, like just conversating w between ourselves, like Survivor, Survivor Crew Edition. Like it would be the fastest to like un to change a battery in the camera. This that because they, they don't. There's no interaction there. They can't talk to you. Yeah. You can't talk to them. That's not supposed to happen. And we were doing that for and and like like just way longer than we were supposed to. And. <laughs> I, but but I do have my answer, and uh, I don't actually know if I'm allowed to like say this cameraman or whatever. But um, you know, it's a. I I I know I think I know who would be out there. I'll have to okay. I'll, I'll have to hit him up after this. Just yeah, let him and know. just yeah, just remind him. Just be like, hey, this question was asked. I didn't answer it on camera, but I would have been. You. Yeah, you know, you're I, trying to yeah trying to keep it respectful. But um, 
You on the show, there was one part in particular, and I think this will segue perfectly into the NFL. You said, I'm, uh, you know, like I'm Patrick Mahomes or something, right? <laughs> and it was a nice little snippet. I think you made an uh, Instagram post, and I asked you who your favorite team was yesterday, and you said the Cowboys. Yeah. So why did you not say, I'm like Dak Prescott? Did you just think it wouldn't land? Because it Two wouldn't. Days. Have. So, first of all, I would like to think. I look a little bit like Patrick Mahomes, you know, just like the the hair and you know the swag, right? Like I think I could. Yeah. I can't throw a football like a side like on them, but but um, I uh I I just I in that moment wanted to be cons. I wanted to, you know I wanted to be. What's the word I'm looking for? I wanted to be um, recognized with greatness. Oh, and in okay. saying Dak Prescott, that would not have been the case. I'm not here to hate on Dak Prescott, but I got a lot of feelings about Dak Prescott. Okay, so let's unpack those feelings. Let's so, unpack them. Where do I start, man? I mean, I, the, I can start for you. Go ahead. If, 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 okay, I can hit you right here. Um, the reality TV show, uh, The Housewives Tackling Him, that commercial that ran all last season, I still see it to this day, just run entirely too long. It was during the Super Bowl. It was running just during the Super made Bowl. Made me not like him. Sakes, dude. Just like I'll unpack that right there. That's a bad PR move. Very you bad. You don't want your star quarterback getting tackled by housewives. And at the end of the day, man, the way I look at it as is like, what on earth is going on in the front office that there has not been any kind of like, there's no fire under there, bro. And, and, and like maybe this is like armchair, like oh yeah, I'm armchair quarterbacking, but like there's no fire under there. Like like like, uh, do, do, uh, do you know? Do you know what I'm saying? There's there's, there's yes. no there's no next guy there's, up mentality. Yeah, no no no. To where like hey Dak, by the way, bro, this guy's coming in and you got to step it up. I I look at I look at what the Jets I look at what the Jets have done. Mm -hmm. Right, I think these are two different people to compare. Dak Prescott has found success in the league. At a much faster rate than Zach Wilson has. I mean, it's just a fact. Yes. But I do believe that this, what the Jets have done with a young guy in Zach Wilson, is going to help them in the future. They bring Aaron Rodgers in, and I think a lot of people might look at it as like, oh, Zach's done, Zach's out. But bringing this in, I think, is going to make Zach Wilson ultimately a better quarterback in a couple of years, right? And, and with, with Dak, I think that a younger guy could have done that. Because, 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 what do we have? We had discussions about Cooper Rush staying. As our quarterback, when Dak was hurt, and Ben DiNucci, uh, XFL legend, oh, this Lord. past yeah, no, no, Ben DiNucci, Ben DiNucci, was, that man, that, that game, that Eagles game was one of the most like disgusting. And I don't know if anybody that's not a Cowboys fan would have even watched the game. It was a Sunday Night Football game. It was the only game he started. It was disgusting. It was like fifteen of thirty-four, dude. It was, it was. Three and out every draw. It was terrible. Ben Danucci, TikTok legend. There was a there TikTok was a legend. Nate Peterman uh, where he threw four interceptions in a quarter. Against the Chargers, yeah. Yeah, so I think that one that one might be the most disgusting ever. Like just start from a rando that, but um yeah no the Cowboys to me have just not only have coddled the man Dak Prescott. I think they feel bad for him with the whole injury thing. Whenever a player gets injured. I think there's this process, and I think Kyler Murray is going through it right now, right, where the team has got to no, you're still our franchise, even though it's like that clock on the wall is ticking, dog, and we got to compete next year. And with Dak Prescott, I, I just, I've never seen him play at a superstar level. And your guys' offensive line's always been good. The defense has been fucking outstanding uh, in, in recent years. Um, and now you just, it's like the same thing with the, the 49ers where you're like, the quarterback position was a little more steady. We may be able to compete. There's, there's things that he can do that other quarterbacks can't, right? Which like, I'm looking at the Saints next year with Derek Carr and I'm like, all right, am I going to get a Derek and Carr that's going to scramble? Yeah. You know, or am I going to get a Derek Carr that's going to take fucking pocket sacks? Yeah. I know Dak's willing to at least put his body on the line and, and go get after it. But if you were to get a new quarterback, let's just go into dream fantasy land, who would it be? Who do you think fits the, the Cowboys system right now? Before I answer that, I just want to touch on what you just said, which is like the coddling. Like that's that's a big problem within our organization, dude. It's like we are the organization that is the most known for coddling 
those within the organization. It's why Stephen Jones is the vice president of the Dallas Cowboys. It's why Jerry Jones is the general manager at 97 years old. I mean, at the end of the day, these are not moves that these are not good. These are not good business financial football moves. They're not. But this, the Cowboys dynasty and legacy of of old has has brainwashed the front office into thinking that everything is going the right way. And I think if anybody steps out of line, they're gone. They're gone. They're done. And yeah. and, and and to the, to the point of Dak Prescott, there are things that he can't do. But I do think that we. I do think that something that. I don't know if this is a good or bad thing, but I think that we let personal things bleed into the um the performance a lot. Yeah. He is, you know, he had he had the, the his brother committed suicide a couple years ago. Maybe that maybe that was a really tough thing for him to come back and, and focus on the game. Mm -hmm. Um and obviously the injury was tough. But but for me, the, the 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 difficult thing to look at with Dak Prescott is I don't see that the injury is part of the problem. This is not we're not yeah. talking about a quarterback that like you said is scared to put his body on the line that's like that's 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 a little more timid in the pocket. We're looking at a quarterback that is making poor decisions that is that is failing to make like what seems to guys like you and I as simple throws. Yeah. Um I, I I remember go ahead. I remember the 49ers game. It was in the third quarter. It was at the end of the third quarter and he had TY Hilton on a seam going straight up the middle. We were down seven, and he missed him. He oh. missed him. I actually might have been Michael Gallup, now I'm thinking about it, but he missed him right over the top, and that was a huge turning point in that game. But Yeah, no, Dak, to me, is a quarterback that struggles anywhere from that 10 to 15-yard range, whether it's like linebacker depth, not being able to put the ball over the top. Like, There's lots of times that I've seen him make reads, and I'm like, damn, that linebacker just had a – you know, they – they get a fingertip on it, but I'm like, bro, you just can't be making those type of plays um, because all great quarterbacks, and I will, uh, you know, probably get a lot of flack from this, but they're really conservative, like 85% of the time, and they are excellent at that other 15% where they're unlocking it deep on those those big time plays, right? That you'll see maybe seven, eight times a game. But a majority of the time, they're finding the running back. They're finding what's underneath. They're being very patient. With Dak Prescott, I just feel like he's like a car that's always sputtering. He's like, "Do I want to go big soft? Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, I'm going. I'm going downfield. No, 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 no. no. I'm not like, dude. He's I'm driving like, a Tesla, slamming, just full throttling. At it. the same time, he's but doing then there's both a stop pedals. sign right there. He's dude. doing both pedals. He's like, oh, why is this working? <laughs> yeah, bro. Like, fuck. Like, like, dude. And sometimes I'll turn the self-driving mode on. And then when he turns autopilot on, autopilot doesn't really read the lines that well, so it's time to back up. And I, I really, I, I love that analogy a lot. But but <laughs> if we're talking dream fantasy, anybody at all, right? Like yes. Even people that are not really up for grabs. Yes. Josh Allen. I think Josh Allen Ooh. is a better. I've and I've I've said this. I think Josh Allen is a better version of Dak Prescott. I think he's like. You know when you play Madden and you can like add attributes to people. I think Josh Allen has that superstar X factor on him, mm. and I know Dak Prescott at one point had that in Madden, but I don't think that he's. Nope. I think he's reverted Not a little anymore. Bit. And 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 I want to just I want to just say I can still believe in Dak Prescott a little bit. I think that this is I think there's a lot of recency bias that goes into how yeah. negative I I speak about him. Yes. But I mean. I do think Josh Allen will be a Bill forever. I don't think he'll ever leave the Bills. So I do want to give you, I do want to give you a more, you know, a more realistic. Yeah, I do think I trust me. The cold weather gets to people. I know that. Okay, I, but and I feel like they have a little bit worse pizza up in Buffalo. It's probably better in Manhattan. So. And they built a stadium in the freezing cold with no dome. I mean, dude, they had to. They had to go to Detroit, right? They had to go to the, like. Like I would be frustrated if I couldn't play a home game because Mother Nature didn't want us to. My Mother Nature, Mother Nature didn't allow. How could you not like how, think like let's get a dome on this know. bad boy? Let's get a retractable roof. I feel like every stadium should have a retractable roof. What I what I said on a on a show, the Veterans Minimum. Shout out to the Veterans Minimum podcast I, uh, with Nick Days over there at Blue Wire. I said Stephon Diggs would have had way better stats last year if he wasn't playing in shitty weather the second half of the season. I would love to have him too. By the way. And 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 and, and what are we all? that the Stephon Diggs, I think personally is on a matter of time before we can get him over to Dallas because, you know, obviously you got Trayvon over there, 
You got Trey Diggs, and they're they're close. I'm not saying I'm not saying that that's like the only thing that like family that ties are anything, strong. But, hey, bro. bro, they you know I see them, we you see these things that they be doing like like Trayvon Diggs had an All Star like he had a a Diggs basketball game. Stephon popped out to it. I think it was out in Dallas. I mean, just little things where where you're kind of like, all right, man. Like Stephon, I think I think a lot of the league knows. I'm making I'm making the call. I don't care, bro. I'm making the call. I think a lot of the league knows. We are a freaking piece or two away from winning the Super Bowl. I said it, and I'm not going back on it. I will pound my fist on this table in front of me if I could. I'm telling you, dude, we are winning the Super Bowl, and it's not going to be that much longer till we do. We're knocking on that door, and I think we could do it with Dak Prescott, too. I know we're sitting here talking about what can Dak do, what can Dak not do. Wow. But um, I, I think we got the pieces, and one of them is the running back position, which I think you wanted to. Touch on. I mean, I I thought about touching on it, but then I, you know, I'm just stuck on, you know, whatever juice you Cowboys fans drink. Is it does Jerry Jones send out to every Cowboys fans like a little shot of like hope <laughs> serum, a little fucking whatever's keeping them alive? You know, and then it's just confusing you on the inside a little bit, Sammy. It's not really Jerry Jones so much as it is like the stupidity within our own brains, like the fact that I'm buying 160 dollar jerseys year in year out after these guys, like <laughs> like like I, like my Tony Pollard jerseys on the way. Like I bought my Trey Diggs jersey. Do you last have year. a Zeke jersey? I, a Zeke I, I I unfortunately have a Zeke jersey, but hey, maybe he'll come back for during the summer, or whatever. But um, yeah, man. Like I, uh, I actually bought the Trey Diggs jersey before he even like I had to customize it, so it was an extra like forty bucks, and then they put it out on the site like a week later, so I could have just waited. But anyways, like for me, it's this. For me, it's every year. Yes, it's like a feel. If it's a little blanket feeling, like, and we'll, we'll probably give you a good record every now and again. We'll probably give you a nice little twelve and five, a thirteen and four, maybe even a fourteen and three That's if we're crazy. feeling it. Right. But it's the playoffs, man. And, and and I think the hard thing for Cowboys fans is until we win a divisional playoff game, we're not going to be satisfied. And that's the biggest – that's the hardest thing is, like, a lot of teams looking at, like, all right, if we make the playoffs, we'll go from there. All right, if we do this, we'll go from there. For Cowboys fans, bro, we can't be satisfied until the end of January. It's going to take until the end of January because – and it wouldn't, it wouldn't have to be this way, George. It wouldn't have to be this way. But unfortunately, the team up north, for the Dallas Cowboys, that is – has made it that way. The Philadelphia Eagles are freaking killing it left and right, bro. And at the end of the day, we can't sit here and piddle paddle between them anymore. We just can't do it anymore. Yeah. We're losing traction. We're losing ground. Jalen Hurts is better than Dak Prescott. Hey, Carson Wentz is not. What's going on? I think it starts with the defensive side. And I think you guys have the defensive player of the year on your guys' team. I don't think anybody literally can stop Micah Parsons. He scares me. When he scares me, bro. He, I mean... I, I'm looking at a, a potential, you know, left tackle in the league, and I if if he ever lines, if you ever lined up with Micah Parsons, you know, after he's been in the league for seven eight years, like wow, because he's so he looks like me, Sammy. Like I, don't, I like Micah Parsons next to these other guys, relatively short, stocky guy, but he fucking flings people. He uh, it's nuts. He's been he's been he's been working on DN too. He's been per, c considering switching to DN, which is like. That's that's, that's okay. scary, dude. Here, uh, I, I need to ask you this question because I'm fucking sick of it. What constitutes a linebacker anymore? I feel like every linebacker is a pass rusher, every, but now you're saying he might move to DN. Hasn't he played DN literally this entire season? Yeah. I, I mean, I, I I agree, man. Like, I, I think the position is becoming a lot more like. I mean, like, I think I think a guy like Khalil Mack came in and kind of changed the system a little bit. True. I don't think he changed the game by any means, but he's one of those guys that was like a scare. I mean, Brian Urlacher, like that dude was scary when you when you when you're running ISO, when you're running up the middle, you you you're gonna meet Brian Urlacher in that hole. But now Terrifying. it's like quarterbacks are to fear guys like Khalil Mack. They are to fear guys like I mean I mean even look over at like I, I when I look at a when I look at a linebacker that that's kind of plays like a true linebacker still I think about a guy like Patrick Queen over Patrick in Baltimore. Patrick Queen is one of my favorite 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 linebackers cuz he um and I think Michael Parsons has it in his bag too and I don't I think the Cowboys should definitely use him occasionally to drop into coverage um because it can surprise the shit out of people you know I mean especially with how good they are off the edge but Patrick Queen is a great example of what a prototype linebacker looks like now, I guess. That's I, I think that a guy like Isaiah Simmons, too, was at one point exactly what you wanted in a linebacker. Quick, 
really good, like really good on the ball, like can play really well in a zone defense. But um, I, I mean, me personally, I'll take a Micah Parsons over a Isaiah Simmons any day. I'm sure that 99 out of 100 NFL executives, the one being a Cardinals executive, <laughs> that would do the same thing because I, I think that this game is just becoming a lot more. It's becoming, I mean, it's more fast paced every year. Mm-hmm. And you would think that that would mean, okay, you want your backers to be able to back up a cover. No, 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 bro. I'm talking like faster. Like I'm talking like Bryce Young could rush for a thousand yards and he's not even a mobile quarterback. I'm talking, maybe that was a crazy thing to say, but I'm, you get what I'm could saying? Like, like, like guys, like guys that have a little chub on their bellies, like Derek Carr is a mobile threat at quarterback. Like these quarterbacks were not, we're, it's not the day of old, bro. The, every quarterback you that's have coming in the league work. now can run. Can you got to be able to sprint away from these studs? And I'm at, there's Micah Parsons is one, and there's going to be many iterations of this. Like uh, defense is changing, um, but one of the things that I wanted to hit on before we leave here: uh, top running backs. Who do you think the top running backs will be going into 2023? When I was thinking about this. Um, I first, I do what every Gen Zer does now, right? Tapped in into chat GBT. So okay. I, I, I wanted to get okay. your list and kind of compare it to what chat GBT thinks. So I like that you use chat GBT because that tells me you're a numbers guy, right? Uh, you a numbers guy? You as seem far like a numbers as like guy. stats? You seem like you would respect the numbers. Stats, stats oh, okay, less okay. than numbers. Okay. I'm a, okay. So we're Analytics. talking numbers and eye test. I feel like those are the two, right? Are you a numbers guy or are you an eye test guy? We're not talking about the Wonderlick test. We're talking about the numbers. Correct. Okay. I pulled some numbers and I think that they're going to back my argument pretty okay. decently. I was thinking about this. I, I was up last night. I couldn't sleep last night. I was thinking about this. And, you know, it's, it's simply just because. This running back position has become so different. It is. I think a I think a year ago I would put a Dalvin Cook up here, but Dalvin Cook, I wouldn't put him in the top seven right now, just because of recent events. And so, here's what I think. Okay, this is my five. Okay, number one uh, in order, by the way. Number one is Christian McCaffrey. It's not close. I, I think Excellent. Christian McCaffrey, you know. He, the you asking what juice I think what juice did the 49ers give him because that guy played in 11 straight games I mean that's kind of that's unheard of yeah no that's unheard of for Christian McCaffrey and and the fact <laughs> the fact that Christian McCaffrey has played in a fraction of the games that I'm going to mention of all these other guys and can still be number one that is a dynamic player and the Carolina Panthers are a poverty franchise for trading him away um actually that's that's a clue <laughs> Carolina <laughs> Christian Car- McCaffrey Christian uh, McCaffrey. That's a good number. number one. I I am uh I'm pleased with that. And it's funny that ChatGPT didn't even put him in the top five for next year. Okay. Insane. I, I really want to hear this. So I'll try I'll try to I'll try to Okay. Josh Jacobs, number two. Josh Jacobs is number two. Yes. Amazing year for Josh Jacobs. I felt like he, there was a low pressure underneath him to get the bag. You know, so I, maybe that had a little something to do with it, but I think Josh Jacobs is a fantastic running back. He had to play second fiddle for that Devontae Adams, Derek Carr, like a uh, reunion party last year. Yeah. But he still is what kept the Raiders in games. I thought he was amazing. Loved it. And he's he's an every down back. So I like Number that. three, Nick Chubb. Nick Chubb. And like with, I said, I got with, the numbers. With gloves, no gloves. No glove, Nick Chubb. No glove, Nick Chubb. No glove, Nick Chubb. And I look at I got right here, 2.9 yards after contact per rush. That's per rush, George. That's not that's not that's not per uh, third down runs or like like that's that's per rush it's three yards after contact per rush. So you touch Nick Chubb, expect three yards every time he touches the ball at least at least. That could quite possibly be the most terrifying stat because you can just envision like that week preparing like all right, I'm going to tackle Nick Chubb this week. Like no, you're going to tackle him and you're going to like it's almost like ah. Uh, I don't even know how to describe it. That's a team, and and and, and just that's a team. That's a team that that I think I mean, they had to change their entire offense when the guy like Kareem Hunt comes in. It doesn't matter though. Nick Chubb is the guy, man. Yes, Nick Chubb is the guy. Built for Cleveland, cold weather. He's uh, and he's a dog. Nick Chubb he is a was, dog. He literally he was, was a dog. There it is. Quite literally, D A W G D A W G. Go dog. Literally a dog. Um. At number four, here's where I might get a little flack. At number four, I got Saquon Barkley. 
Saquon Barkley came back last year and showed, I think, a lot of people what he's about. I mean, I'm 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 a Gen Z, like I'm a I'm I'm a product of what I see on social media. Yes. And I remember being a freshman or eighth grader, a freshman in high school or an eighth grader, when I saw the video of him power cleaning 405. And I quite literally was attracted to him after that. I was <laughs> genuinely attracted to Saquon Barkley because of his insane strength. And you know, I talk about my quads. I love some quad strength. That guy has the second quads. to AJ Dillon has some of the best quads I've ever seen. And I think, you know, just, just, just truthfully, I think he offers so much to that team and they would not have been the team that they were without him. I mean, you saw him play against the Vikings, played an insane name against the Vikings. Cowboys always seem to lock him up a little bit. But I think Saquon Barkley is an amazing running back. Yeah, when I was on the 24-hour podcast with John Orlando of Action Junkies, um, we had Gary Brecca on. And Gary Brecca, he's a part of 10X Health System, and he is uh, very connected with the NFL. Like, he had a booth at Radio Row for the Super Bowl and everything. So I had a chance to ask him a question. I was like, you know, as a betting man. Who is the healthiest team in your opinion? Because he's always helping those teams out, like with all the recovery stuff. And he like went, oh, I'd uh, rather just say who the healthiest player was. And the healthiest player he said was Saquon Barkley. So not only like does he look at and appear it on the outside, but he's doing all the work, the nutrition, that all that shit that people don't see. Yeah. Um, and the Giants, man, they got Danny Dimes and him this year. And I think whew, it's a t your We're, division is so tough to me because I see th them possibly being contenders to win that division. And we're just waiting on. I mean, I think we're waiting for Washington to figure it out, too. I mean, that was a team that was they were pretty abysmal, but they weren't too abysmal. Right. Yeah. They're a quarterback away from being right in it, too. They got a guy like Brian Robinson. You know, they got a, like Terry McLaurin is, is, yep. a, is a beast like. Um, Did Brian Robinson make your list? I mean, he got literally shot last year and played yards. in the same game or Real, played that same he's a beast. season. He makes my uh, he makes my uh, honorable mention. You know, the, my David Goggins okay. motivational list. He does not make the top five running back list because who rounds out the top five at number five is Dallas's very own Tony Pollard. We're talking about going into twenty twenty three, right? Is that Jerry Jones. We're talking Scott. about going into twenty twenty three. Okay, you can't tell me that there is a running back that. The league was like this, man, with the run. Okay, like Derrick Henry, it's great. Jonathan Taylor's. They sat up like this with Tony Pollard. Nobody TV. thought he was going to go out and do what he was going to do out there. And not only is Tony Pollard a fast and hard runner, dude is a freaking menace when you're throwing the football up in the air for him to go out and get it. That dude is such a crafty playmaker. And he also just, I mean... I mean, look at the tape on the back. He's he's a, he's a rebirth Alvin Kamara. Where Alvin Kamara been at? I mean, he's so, he's what Alvin Kamara has been wishing to be for the last year or two. Yeah, no, no, no. You know, AK AK is gonna probably have to sit through a little bit of a suspension. I think we're preparing with this. We got Jamal Williams in. We know AK is gonna. You know, I don't. Does he get locked up for that? I just think he gets suspended. Huh? Yeah. yeah, I think it'll be fine. I think it was he out means, here. It was out here, right? Yeah. Wasn't it out here? Yeah, yeah. It was, it was after fun. after Las Vegas nightclub, obviously. <laughs> um, but did it piss you off? Because it pissed me off when you would see Tony Pollard going off, and then out of the blue, you're like, number twenty one comes that, running in. Is that twenty? Is that Zeke coming into the game? Like, and I felt like every <sighs> Cowboys fan in the stadium was probably like. Boo. Yeah, it, it was tough. And I, you know, I think a lot of us Cowboys fans, look, I have a love and respect for Zeke Elliott, man. But at the end of the day, bro, like bringing that dude in on third down when Tony Pollard just had a Tony Pollard, 17 yards, Tony Pollard, 18 yards, Zeke, two yards, one yard, check down, fourth Boom. down. Yep. I mean, it's a lot, bro. It, it was frustrating. But um, I think that re reshaping the offense i think i think we could benefit from bringing a guy like zeke back reshaping the offense to um tony pollard's the guy zeke you're second in command let's see what I, rock. you let's definitely go. need zeke and let me tell you why you need zeke zeke is plugged in with the most beautiful women all across the country right i think he is the ultimate wingman for all his teammates and I think Jerry Jones knows that, right? So although Zeke may not be getting like the love he deserves on the field, yeah. what he does off the field for the Cowboys and keeping the boys happy, 
It's imperative. It is. I think, and I think he's he's that ultimate guy. Like you know, he's like, all right, you're going to Phoenix. Oh yeah, I went. I went to Phoenix. Oh, there. You know, he's you know working working moves for his his. You know, his squad. I, I mean, I mean, let's why not, get rid of that? Let's and not like, act like Jerry Jones doesn't have a roster, right? Jerry Jones got to have a roster. Man. Jerry Jones, he's fucks got gilfs. Yeah, yeah. He's, I mean, he, exclusively just Texas gilfs. He's got that, but the, but bro, <laughs> brother, you know Texas, bro. When there's one of them, there's ten of them, and when there's ten of them, there's fifty grandchildren. So there's a lot of room to go around, bro. I'm Damn. telling you, all that it takes is to pop up out of the Cowboys game and. Hey, like, hey, you guys want to come? You guys want to come to AT and T? Hey, you guys want to come to Ford Field? It's in, uh, down in Pasadena, California. You guys want to come to sp- summer training? Hey. And then you get a little. Uh, I sends, don't know what goes on after that. He sends a private jet. I don't uh, know what goes if, on after that. If you yourself have ever been DM'd by Jerry Jones or his team, and you are a female under the age of thirty, please contact Gridiron Junkies. We'd love to have you on. We'd love just to, to and talk to you. And- just to you know. Or males. I mean, we don't know what these guys like behind we closed really doors. We really don't. We really don't. So that's, that's, I think, the best spot to end this is if you've been affected by Jerry Jones. <laughs> I do, I do want to mention really quick. Yes. Isaiah Pacheco. Okay. Going to be a great running back. Brees Hall. Going to be amazing this year. And I left Derrick Henry out, and I left Jonathan Taylor out because Derrick Henry, uh, one, just one little quick number, just quickly, quickly. Washed. Quick, really quick. Derrick Henry faces heavy boxes, which for those of you that are not football gurus, is eight people in the box in mm. on 38% of his carries. When Derrick Henry's in the backfield, you know he's not going out for a wheel or an angle. Derrick Henry is running through amazing. He's space. amazing, but his um, knees can only give so much. So same thing, right? For uh Chat GPT, right? Oh, because it's it's unable to have that eye test. I think your your list definitely highlighted like who are the studs. Christian McCaffrey not being on the list list was a, a disgrace. But Chat PT went in this order. Derrick Henry, okay, because he has led the league in rushing for the past two seasons and has established himself as one of the most dominant running backs in recent years. Number two. Dalvin Cook of the Minnesota Vikings. Cook had a strong season, ranking among the top running backs in rushing yards and touchdowns. His ability to contribute in both the running and passing game makes him a valuable asset. Number three, Jonathan Taylor, one you listed. Uh, He had a breakout season in 2021, and then this past year, I drafted him first overall in the Gridiron Junkies Fantasy Football Draft, and I I lost the league. So Uh, (laughs) So did I, bro. Number four, Nick Chubb. You guys agreed on that one. I think he's a stud. Um, definitely could be the leading rusher of the league this next year. I can see that happening. And then number five, ChatGPT said Alvin Kamara of All the right. New Orleans Saints. Not a bad list, but I definitely like your list a lot better. Um, I do too. And, you know, Sammy, I see you coming on possibly again in the future just uh, to tell me, you know, why the Cowboys started off 0-4. Or why they started off three and out? I think we'll start off a solid six and one. <laughs> okay, I think so. There's okay. a couple. There's a couple pivotal games on there. There is. There is a couple. Are there any you're going to? I mean, I know you're like you're big time now. Are there any games on that that schedule that you're like? I've got. I've got there. LA. I've got LA circled. I want to go out there for the Chargers game. That's LA. Um, I would love to go. I would love if I could make it to the Jets game. I think that's gonna be Aaron Rodgers' last. I I think I actually think that the, the, I I wrote these on the, the most three pivotal games, is week two against the Jets, week five at, at San Francisco, okay, week nine at the Eagles, and then at the Bills at week fifteen. And so I'd like to go to any one of those four games. Um, I think the you know the 49ers, like, can we ever beat this team when it act like can we? And and even that game is not. We can maybe beat them in the Raiders. Can we play them in the playoffs again? Can this please happen again? Because I cannot go to Disneyland anymore and see 49ers fans that get in my face when I'm wearing a Cowboys shirt about how much better they are than me. I can't do it anymore. So can we play them again, please? Settle the score. Okay. Okay. And then if they ever continue to uh, persist to like give you shit, just bring them back on the show, and then we'll discuss as to why they put a quarterback in who had a broken elbow – and they decided to run the ball for uh, the second half of a championship game. And instead, why didn't they put Christian McCaffrey or Debo at quarterback? I've still been trying to get this answer from people. So if they ever do give you shit, let them know to come on this show. And, uh, you know. Done deal. We can identify how they fucking flopped it at the end. Yeah. 
you guys are still better in my opinion. Like I feel like you truthfully. might be you might just be saying that, right? Just because I'm sitting here. No, because the storylines, the storylines, and then I, like I look at the 49ers, I'm like, come on, guys, you guys really didn't like think at half the people say Shanahan's a great coach. At halftime, you know all of your quarterbacks are injured. You aren't like, all right, Christian, come here. We're you know we're running this. Was there not a prepare? Could they have not have signed? No. They could they not have signed somebody that week? I don't know the rule. I I feel like they I feel like they were completely ill prepared for. I just don't understand how situation how you you don't have packages where Debo Samuel's or Christian McCaffrey aren't it quarterback 100 percent, dude i like even if if it's just for shits and gigs at the beginning of the season like you gotta have something something i mean the fucking cowboys put zeke at center to end the year so yeah i mean mean, who would have thought that (laughs) yeah it's uh i'm and there even people that like were what was that play like oh game was over at the i can't even this the game was over at the beginning of the fourth quarter bro that game was already over dog like i really did see what they were going with on that play like that with zeke at center and i hope they run it again next year because there's promise there's promise i'm gonna draw it up on a board for you after this and then i'll I'll explain it um but uh sammy let the people know where they can find you to uh see your meteoric rise to fame go just scroll through sammy's instagram you guys want to keep up with this face and you want to see how to get quads like this because I will be posting a workout video soon enough. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram. It's Layadi, L-A-Y-A-D-I dot Sammy, S-A-M-I. Uh, I have a Twitter, but I don't use it. So uh, you could, Twitter's toxic. Don't use Twitter. You can just follow me on Instagram. Uh, you know, and if you're uh, under 25, let's rock and roll. If you're under 25, over 20, right in that age range, um, and you like to talk sports or you like to talk about anything else and you're attractive, hit me up. Ladies and gentlemen, the next contestant of Love Island, Sammy Layotti. <laughs> it's been a pleasure to be here with him today. And if you like football content, you can follow at Gridiron Junkies across all platforms. I'm Mr. George Carmona. And Nick, you had an excellent question today. And I'm proud of you because this is the second time you're engineering for the show. So shouts out to you in the back. Uh, tap my intro and let's get out of here.